Hi, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Counseling Associates. Um, I got some feedback from one of my viewers of the videos that uh, I should get some nature in the background. Uh, I, I think this actually looks more like a funeral parlor, but sorry about that. I'm trying to take some feedback. So uh, I'm going to be discussing a, uh, an interesting topic today. It's called... To love for a lifetime takes talent. And uh, I recently was in Chicago at a conference, and one of the speakers handed out a poem that I thought was excellent. Uh, it has sort of a strange name. It's called the Kama Sutra of Kindness, position number three. Don't know what that means, uh, but that was the, the name of the poem. And... Um, so uh, I'm going to read it for you. Uh, I'm putting out uh, a blog, and uh, there is a link in the blog to where if you're a uh, fan of Garrison Keillor with the Prairie Home Companion, uh, he actually reads the poem, and I'm sure when he reads it, it's going to sound a lot better than when I do. Uh, but he's a fan of this poem as well. It's, it's, a, it's a poem about marriage. And it says, <clears throat> it's easy to love through a cold spring when the poles of the willows turn green, pollen falls like yellow curtain, and the scent of paper white clogs and clots the air. But to love for a lifetime takes talent. You have to mix yourself with the strange beauty of someone else. Wake each morning for like 72,000 mornings in a row, so breathed and bound and tangled that you can hardly sort out your arms and legs. You have to find forgiveness in everything, even ink stains and broken cups. You have to be willing to move through life together in the way the long grasses move in a field and you careen blindly toward the other side. There's never going to be anything straight or predictable about your path except the flattening and the springing back. You must go on walking for years hand in hand, waist deep in weeds, but bent slightly forward like two question marks. And all the while it burns my dear, it burns beautifully above you and goes on burning like a relentless sun. So uh, let me uh, uh, read this poem again. And what I'm going to do is just uh, offer some uh, commentating in between the verses. Because uh, I, I just think this poem says a lot <clears throat> And I do think it's, uh, oh, my guy who gave me feedback told me not to clear my throat, but sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> I did it again. Um, here we go. Uh, I'm pretty sure this, this author had been married for a very, very long time. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a fatigue and a, a weariness that, that I picked up on in, in the poem. Uh, but also uh, somebody who's very resolute in their commitment. It's easy to love through a cold spring when the poles of the willows turn green. Pollen falls like a yellow curtain and the scent of paper whites clot the air. But to love for a lifetime takes talent. Well, I don't know about where you are, but in Indianapolis, Indiana... We certainly have had a cold spring. Uh, I can see snow on the ground as I look out the window on the 29th day of March. This time last year, I was riding my motorcycle. I'm not going to be riding my motorcycle today. <clears throat> um, so the clots, uh, the white clots in the air have been big fat snowflakes <laughs> here in Indianapolis. So when I, when I talk about uh, talent. Uh, it takes talent to love for a lifetime. I don't mean in a talent that you were born with. It's really more of a developed skill. 
uh, in my experience, the people who develop those skills uh, have done a lot of work in individual therapy, couples therapy, group therapy. They've read a lot of books. They've cried a lot of tears. They've done a lot of work on themselves because life is hard and marriage is very difficult because who do we marry? We don't marry perfect matches who complement it, complement us and make us happy. That is a myth. Who we marry is somebody who is put together psychologically very much like the people who hurt us the most in childhood. And their job is to continue on the tradition of hurting us badly. That's what marriage is. Anybody who doesn't know that doesn't know much about marriage. And they haven't been married for very long. So uh, these skills can be developed over time but it does take time. You have to mix yourself. I love that. You have to mix yourself with the strange beauty of someone else. Wake each morning for 72,000 mornings in a row, so breathed and bound and tangled that you can hardly sort, sort out your arms and legs. That's the challenge, is to stay true to yourself, to know who you are, to know where you begin and where your partner ends and where you end and where they begin. It takes uh, what, we, what we call it, uh, we call it individuating, uh, being self-differentiated. Uh, in my blog, I have a link uh, for Jerry Wise has a video called The Basics of Self-Differentiation. So look for that on YouTube or uh, through a link on, on our site. Uh, because he, he discusses how to hold on to yourself and to be true to yourself uh, while still being true to the marriage. And it takes a great deal of talent and skill and emotional health to pull that off. You have to find forgiveness in everything, even ink stains and broken cups. And I'm assuming the author... Uh, I think her name is Mary McKay, by the way. Uh, the author is using metaphor here because she talks about ink stains and broken cups. And that, I think, represents uh, stuff that uh, stains very deeply. And the broken cups represent uh, shattered emotions, shattered dreams. Um, it isn't actual ink stains and broken cups that... My couples have, have difficulty for, forgiving. It's the stain of extramarital affairs. There's something about that that just crushes the innocence of a couple's love. It's the broken cups of uh, betrayal and abandonment and addiction. But uh, she is right when... Uh, she says, uh, one of the keys is forgiveness. I've been working with a lot of men who've broken some cups and stained some ink, you know, on some things. And, and what I try to teach them is they need to bow deeply in humility. And they need to apologize well. Many men, pardon my language, uh, give pretty half-ass apologies. And then... They're exasperated with their wives who aren't able to forgive them. <laughs> you know, you need uh, very deep, very sincere, uh, very heart-rending apologies. I was working with a fellow last night, and he was stinking up the room with bad apologies. But then he found a vein of, of genuine remorse. And it's hard to find genuine remorse because a lot of times it's mixed with shame. So we want to bury our shame and deny our stuff because we don't... Oh, the sun's coming in. Let me refigure this here. Um, we want to deny the shame because uh, it's too painful and it's, it's too difficult for us to handle. Um, so... 
we want to bury things and and when you bury things then you're really not giving a very good apology at all so it has to be heartfelt you have to be willing to move through life together the way long grasses move in a field when you careen blindly toward the other and what I pictured was, uh, you know, when the Star Spangled Banner is on and it gets to the words, the amber waves of grain. On the blog, there's a pic picture of the amber waves of grain. Um, but there is a sort of a, a symbiosis and a dance and a flow to long married people. They, uh, they know how to move with each other, toward each other, and um, it really uh, can be beautiful seeing people married 25, 30, 35, 40 years because they become such a part of one another. There's never going to be anything straight or predictable about your path except the flattening and the springing back. I love that. Um, Really, there's very little in life that is predictable. Um, we like to think that we control a lot more than we actually do control. Um, bad things happen. Uh, the economy can go bad. Uh, business ventures can go bad. Uh, addictions develop. People have affairs. Uh, kids get in trouble. Um, finances get messed up. Uh, you know, we go into marriage and life uh, looking for plan A, but sometimes we end up with plan B. So um, we do get flattened individually, and marriages get flattened. The marriages that make it are the ones that spring back. They have the energy, the fight, the resolution to spring back from an affair, uh, from a betrayal, from an addiction, from a failure, from a disconnection. And the marriages that do not make it are the ones that they just simply have run out of energy and uh, they uh, uh, simply uh, don't have the ability to spring back at all. I uh, apologize, the sun keeps shining in on me and... Uh, blinded me out. Uh, I assure you that's not a halo <laughs> that you're experiencing there. So the next line, and uh, no, here it is. You just go on walking for years, hand in hand, waist deep in the weeds, bent slightly forward like two question marks. That is beautiful. Can you, can you just see two elderly people sort of hunched over as they're walking along like two question marks and you know we'd all like to strut through life with all kinds of swag uh, and uh, be like two explanation points or like six of them and just you know walk into the end zone of life and spike the ball and you know do a victory dance you know uh, we get to do a victory dance every now and again most of us we get to spike the ball, you know, occasionally. But uh, we also uh, have a lot of setbacks in life that, uh, you know, get in the way of uh, really what we're trying to do. And uh, we do suffer from some defeats that, um, you know, we didn't see coming. And... Uh, those things, uh, you know, they can be a shock to the system that you're set back in that way. But uh, my experience is that, uh, you know, struggles bring about humility, and humility is all good. And we don't have the answers to everything, and we're not super men and super women. And as soon as you can realize that you're not a superman or a superwoman, then you can go about the business of being human and not uh, uh, 
playing roles that are shallow and just simply not true. So it's okay to, to have a question mark about the viability of your marriage and how happy you are and how successful you've been and how good of a parent you've been and how much of a mark you've left on life. It's okay to question things, but, you know, it's cool to occasionally spike the ball and do your dance too. So the last line, and all the while it burns, my dear, it burns beautifully above you and goes on burning like a relentless sun. I think the sun behind me has been sort of relentless today trying to blot me out. So, but I, I think the, uh, the final line, if, if you're an optimist, you're thinking the thing that burns is love and passion and the energy, positive energy in a relationship. And, and, and maybe that's what the author meant. I don't know her. I haven't asked her, but it doesn't read like that to me. Um, I think the thing that burns is more the struggles, the fights, the addictions, the distance, the dysfunction. Um, I think that's what the author is referring to, that, you know, uh, life is hard, and it's a long journey. And uh, I saw this couple as being a well-married, functional couple, but not a blissful one. A couple that is walked through life as question marks, bent over, uh, blown around, who <clears throat> suffered under the heat of some very serious problems, but came out of it holding on to one another. And, uh, you know, I, I tell people that, you know, if you're looking for bliss, uh, you're not going to find it in marriage for very long. You, you can marry somebody and idealize them and um, go through, uh, if you're in midlife, you can maybe go through uh, a year or two before it uh, blows up in your face, but it's it's going to blow up in your face. Um, so um, uh, just, just encourage you to uh, lower your expectations because uh, marriage is a marathon race. It is, it is not a sprint. And uh, uh, there are uh, realistic uh, things in life that, that, that sometimes lower the bliss level, absolutely. So um, there are uh, struggles in life that, that I tell my clients, what you're looking for isn't bliss. What you're looking for is something that works where there's more windows of heaven than there are windows of hell involved. Uh, in this couple, I think they had quite a few windows of hell, but they had just enough windows of heaven to get down the path together and get untangled and figure out who per each person was, and, and I, think, I think it worked. And given who we marry, we marry people who are well uh, versed at hurting us. That's who we marry. You can get divorced and you're going to marry somebody else like that. You want to do it all over again and they're going to get you too. So uh, so this this is a, a beautiful, powerful poem that, that talks about developing the skills uh, to be happy and to be well married and to have it work. So again, uh, Mark Smith with Family Tree Counseling. Uh, I do have uh, five ebooks that are available for download through our website at familytreecounseling.com. And uh, here's to your relationship. Uh, may you do the work that it requires of you. May you learn the lessons that your teacher, uh, your gift, your spouse uh, brings to you. May you be thankful for those lessons. And may you develop a talent and a skill to love for a lifetime. God bless.